Today I want to talk about how the 43 million Ape FDDs were illegally covered and hidden inside the FTX tokenized swaps. I also want to talk about how the crypto contagion is already spreading, how numerous other exchanges are already going under, and how this will continue to get much worse. So stay tuned and let's make some money. Now I want to dive straight in with the key information. So, Cornelius the Ape tweeted saying, is the SEC complicit in allowing broker dealers and the DTCC to use tokenized securities as the collateralized asset to provide the like kind securities needed to kick the FDD can down the road? Allowing them to use the AMC tokenized securities as a placeholder while not having the underlying assets of both AMC and Ape. So it says here that Regulation SHO Rule 204 provides an extended period of time to close out certain failures to deliver. Specifically, if a failure to deliver position results from the sale of a security that a person is deemed to own and that such person intends to deliver as soon as all restrictions on the delivery have been removed. The firm has up to 35 calendar days following the trade date to close out of the failure to deliver position by purchasing securities of a like kind and quantity. So it doesn't say the exact same securities with the exact same QSIP number need to be purchased. It just says that securities of like kind and quantity need to be purchased. So this basically means these broker dealers and market makers can fail to deliver on the genuine AMC and Ape shares and instead say, look guys, we found these extra shares over on FTX. They've got the same like, kind and even quantity. So we're just gonna buy these or locate these ones instead. You may say, hang on, Tom, how exactly does this tie into Ape as well? We know that FTX had 400 million AMC tokenized stocks. We know that Bittrex had 625 million AMC tokenized stocks as well. But who was holding any Ape tokenized stocks and did they even exist? Well, a quick Google search shows that Kraken was holding AMC Entertainment preferred tokenized stocks on FTX, basically saying that FTX not only issued AMC tokenized stocks, but they also issued AMC preferred equity or APE tokenized stocks as well. It even says here the price of AMC Entertainment preferred tokenized stock on FTX is $1.53 per the ticker APE AMC. So these tokenized stocks aren't specifically AMC tokenized stocks, they are APE AMC tokenized stocks, aka the AMC preferred equity securities or the apes. But now the really weird part of it is when we click onto Kraken and try and find the actual page that shows all of the details about these ape tokenized stocks, it says that something went wrong. It seems these ape securities have already been delisted from Kraken. But if we go back, we can see some clear evidence of these AMC Entertainment preferred tokenized stocks actually trading from different websites like CoinGecko. If we look on CoinGecko, we can see these ape tokenized securities started trading on Monday, 19th of September, obviously when ape was released, but interestingly they were seemingly delisted on the 10th of November just as FTX started blowing up. If we look down a smidge lower to the markets we can see that FTX was indeed listing these APE AMC to USD tokenized securities and there was even quite a significant traded volume as well. But again interestingly enough it doesn't show the Kraken APE AMC tokenized securities maybe they were delisted or removed at some time before. But it goes to show these tokenized securities were both applicable to AMC and to APE as well and it's likely these hedge funds and market makers and broker dealers use these APE tokenized securities to hide these 43 million FTDs. Obviously the eight tokenized securities started trading back in September and the AMC tokenized securities started trading back in January of 2021 and therefore it's likely these broker dealers and these market makers have been abusing this tactic for some time now. But obviously due to the implosion of FTX this can no longer happen. This is just another avenue or another escape route for these shorts and these market makers that has now been closed. Also guys if you haven't already be sure to sign up to Moomoo. Moo. The platform is very easy to use and you can even create your own 1348 indicators and use other indicators like the MFI money flow index. And right now Moomoo is currently celebrating their 10th anniversary and is currently giving away $10 absolutely free and 15 free shares on top of that worth up to $2,000 each. And Moomoo is also celebrating their 10th anniversary and is currently giving away $10 absolutely free and 15 free shares on top of that worth up to $2,000 each. This is brilliant if you're a new investor just starting your journey or if you're an experienced investor, a veteran investor and you just need some more tools. And as Nate Daddy tweeted, he said they're getting worried, angry, and they're slipping up. They're surrounded. It's likely that Gary Gensler will be forced to take down a few to cover himself. 
the next step is they begin to turn on each other. Hedge funds and banks, the first to cover, loses the least. As more and more of these escape routes are being closed for these broker dealers, market makers and hedge funds, there's less and less ways they can escape the squeeze and therefore it won't be long until they start turning on each other. They will soon realise that all of the escape routes are being closed off or have been closed off and then it will be a mad rush and a mad panic to close out of their short positions first. Obviously the first to close out likely won't end up going bankrupt but those that don't decide to close out straight away will be liquidated. And on top of that another way these hedge funds are messing up is by failing to report APE on their 13F forms. As Hang Loose tweeted, he said the biggest story in the stock market today is why have 507 institutions failed to report their 13F holdings on APE? This is a mass scale of violations of the SEC 13F reporting rules. He said APE was issued in quarter three and the final day of quarter three was the 30th of September, meaning all 13Fs needed to be reported. We can see that AMC has 536 registered institutional holders, whereas Ape on the other hand seems to only have 29. And Tony Denaro tweeted saying, you bring up an excellent question here about the Ape 13Fs. Only 29 have been filed. Did these institutions sell Ape before the 30th of September? Well, if that's the case, retail should surely own every single share. Or maybe their AMC shares were loaned out so they didn't ever receive any Ape shares. Or maybe there's not enough Ape shares and that's why they received IOUs or synthetic shares which they can't report. Obviously we know there's not enough Ape shares to go around and that's why a number of hedge funds never even received a single Ape. They could have potentially also been issued IOUs instead which they obviously can't report. Hanglish replied saying absolutely, it would appear that if institutions had sold all their ape, all but 1.5 million shares of it must have gone to retail investors, otherwise the rest of the 13F filings should have been filed yesterday. But Alex also replied saying what about the exemption clause that allows some institutions not to disclose some positions in their 13F filings if it's thought that such a disclosure would reveal the investment strategy of the firm or if it would be detrimental to the firm itself, potentially reveal revealing some kind of fraud. It's likely these institutions have specifically applied to the SEC and to FINRA to ensure that APE doesn't have to be disclosed on their 13F filings as obviously it would reveal their investment strategy or would be damaging to the overall firm. But obviously if that is the case it's basically an admission of guilt. They know that if they do disclose their APE shares it would be damaging for the firm because it would reveal some kind of synthetic shares. But we're also seeing the current crypto collapse contagion already spreading and I do think it's going to continue getting much worse. As Go Gavin tweeted, he said he's hearing some chatter about Gemini not having enough funds to cover customer deposits and also Gemini is trying to raise funds from investors. Again, it's not just Gemini that's struggling because Genesis has also halted all withdrawals. The parent company of both Genesis and Grayscale is the single largest holder of Bitcoin, holding $11 billion worth. Obviously, if the parent company of both Genesis and Grayscale is insolvent, this could potentially mean that $11 billion worth of Bitcoin is about to be dumped into the open markets. But again, it's not just Gemini, it's not just Genesis, but also the Australian based exchange Digital Surge has temporarily suspended withdrawals and deposits, citing a limited exposure to FTX. Clearly, their exposure can't be very limited if they're having to suspend withdrawals and are likely going insolvent, just like many other exchanges are right now. But some positive news is that the FBI is planning to extradite Sam Bankman Freed from the Bahamas as the crypto contagion from the FTX collapse spreads to $20 billion. If Sam is actually extradited, he may indeed actually face some kind of criminal charges and may end up going to jail. But as a result of the current contagion and the shape of the current market and market dynamic, Michael Burry has tweeted saying, you have no idea how short I am. Michael Burry has obviously opened up a very large short position on the wider market or maybe specifically the property market or maybe specifically the crypto market. MAC10 also tweeted this chart of the market showing the current market dynamic or current market direction, basically suggesting there's a significant fall further to come. MAC10 is expecting the S&P 500 to continue falling all the way down to around 3,000 points and potentially even below. 
We've seen the S&P 500 has reached its current peak bullish top and is likely to roll over and continue falling until the S&P 500 hits 300 points or below. But guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.